Hey guys, Simon from Land Rover Drive. Today we are in the garage and we are going to do a tire change uh, or a Ford. I'm going to change from the General Grip Grabbers uh, to uh, the Nokia and Hakka uh, winter studded tires. So we are in October, uh, middle of October, and the temperature is it's uh, been creeping down below uh, zero degrees so we are seeing some uh, icing on the roads uh, in the morning so uh, better safe than sorry we will change before uh, before I have to so uh, first we need to get the tires so we need to go out back <coughs> how many are left and by just uh, just a simple check I determined which one I put in the front I try to uh, rotate them so that uh, the ones in the front goes at the back and vice versa the next year uh, so, uh, but uh, basically taking the ones that I think is the best and putting them on the front for uh, best grip and steering and also for, uh, for uh, when you're braking and you're going to stop. So, yes. For a uh, discovery in Norway, I really recommend using studded tires because the car is so heavy. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be driving on anything else when it's icy. So on these tires, you can see there's an uh, indi indicator uh, of usage. So there's 40%, 60%, and 80%. So as you can see on this tire, it's uh, starting to to wear on the 80%. So it's much. There's a lot left on the tires. So I've been driving on this tires uh, for two years now two seasons two winter seasons and they have been really great and I opted for the 17 inch uh, rim so I wanted uh, more rubber on the tire higher tire uh, I also went for the narrower tire so this is uh, 245 times 70 times 17 slash 17 uh, because uh, when I I went for a narrow tire because when I drive to work usually uh, it's here in the center of Norway and they salt the roads heavily which means all the all the snow melts so to get less uh, aquaplaning I went for the narrower tire and that uh, has proven to be a good choice. So, uh, yeah. Also, they have been working great on ice and also on snow. We usually have one or two trips up north, uh, to north of Norway and also Sweden, where we get temperatures down to almost uh, 30, uh, minus 30. Down to, yeah. Uh, and also a lot of snow, snow covered roads, icy roads, and they have been great. So uh, the reason for uh, I'm using the Hakka Alte 2 instead of the Hakka Bolita 8 
uh, is because uh, or nine half a little nine is because uh, these are rated for a higher uh, weight and also when you get uh, a tire that is uh, have some harder rubber it stops more easily on wet asphalt and since it's, they are salting and I usually use this car for the daily drive to work I opted for the, the harder tire and also the the better stopping stopping distance on the wet asphalt so that's why I'm using the Alta 2 instead of the, the Hakka 8 so that's why I selected this tire so uh, let's get the general grabbers off and then put these on and we will be safe this winter as well so one thing I forgot to mention is the rotation uh, uh, direction of the rotation of the tire. Some tires have a specific rotation and some tires do not. This uh, Hakka does have a rotation specific direction. Um, so if you look at the tire you can see it stands rotation also with arrows. So uh, but for uh, I actually got this wrong and I had to redo it last year because I just looked at the graphics on the, the tire and thought this was the direction of the tire. So, Nokia, if you're uh, watching, change the, the, the graphics. This is just bad user design. So, check the tire. Do it have a rotation uh, specific direction? And be sure to put it on the right way so as, as you can see on this tire it has these slots these grooves in a specific direction and this tire is going to rotate that way it's going to rotate like so this means the water is going to hit here and then it's going to drain out as you drive so that's why this tire has that direction rotation and direction so these are the tools I'm using uh, using our breaker bar with an extension and a 22 mil socket I'm using a, a drill with a drill bit that fits the, the socket also 22 and I use a, a torque wrench to tighten up the, the torque at the end. So I do not use air tools even though I have them because I find this just easier and also uh, you want to be using the torque wrench to when you tighten them up. If you use the torque wrench you're never going to be not gonna say never, but you're not gonna be as uh, you're not gonna have so much trouble getting them off after the season if you just use the correct torque. So and yeah, and you also need a a, a good uh, good jack. So I'm using a three ton jack just to be this on the safe side. Uh, so basically, what you your minimum is this to make your life better and easier I use the drill and also you can uh, have the I really recommend the using the torque wrench so let's uh, lift it up so you can lift on the the control arms but you I usually lift on the the, the frame So you want to get a jack that can lift 
pretty high because you got to get it off the ground since it flexes so much. So no trouble. So I haven't had this tire off since uh, since the spring. And since I used the torque wrench, almost almost too easy. So let's do this. Use the drill. Give it a notch. Take it away. Get the tire. So during spring, I clean this off with a brush or, or with a, with a power tool or with the air tools uh, during the so. Since there are no salt during the summer, I don't have to do it now. Uh, so that's why I'm not cleaning this off. And use the drill again. Just set it with the uh, and then it cross tighten just enough. Set down, then use the torque wrench. Be sure to use the same grip every time to get the same amount of torque. So you did. Uh, so I took this one. Then I'm gonna cross tighten with this till it clicks. Cross tighten that again. Cross tighten that again. Cross tighten that. And I do always do a second round. And if you are unsure, you can always do a third round. There we have it. Changing a tire on the Discovery. Pretty much the same on every tire. Uh, good to check the brakes, see how much left, and uh, yeah, check everything else in there if you if you're unsure of the air condition. Yep, let's do the others. Find the position on the frame. Don't jack on the compressor. I usually go pretty much beyond the compressor on the back here. see the compressor lid so I go behind the compressor on the frame 
on the rear axle, jack it pretty high. If you think your bolts are uh, are stuck, it, it could be wise to just loosen them before you lift the tire totally completely off the ground. <coughs> You can see how high you have to lift the rear of the Discovery to get the lift on the tires when you're uh, jacking on the frame. has a new upper control arm so that's good no leaks uh, brakes are pretty much okay <coughs> yeah Let's see new tire on try to center the bolt Make it easier to put the new put the nuts on. Cross tighten just a bit. And then using the torque wrench. Also, a good thing about not using the air tools is that you don't ruin the aluminium covers on the bolts or the, on the nuts. tires
Now, all tires are done. Since we are jacking so high, uh, you can see that the camber on the tires, after done with changing the tires, are uh, is really off. So it's standing like so. So you basically need to, to move it after you're done. Uh, you need to drive like five to ten kilometers, and then do a recheck of the bolts with the torque wrench. Uh, but for before we do that, I'm gonna check the tire pressure because they, these have been six months in the shed so we need to check that the tire pressure is uh, okay so let's do that that's the compressor i made a compressor house so that i can use it during the evenings while the kids are asleep and also I don't have to use my headgear when I'm in the garage while it's on. So let's uh, get some air in the tires. But now during pre pre winter season, I uh, I run on 2.7, 2.8 bars, so 40 psi. Let's do the others. Yes, so these are my uh, General Grabbers 82. They have been working great, and I have had them for five years now. So the threads are holding up, uh, yeah, can't complain. So the Discovery is pretty good setup because I don't see any uh, excessive wear on the outside or the inside of the thread. So that's good. Um, as I said, five years uh, this fall. So I bought them in the fall and then I run them through the first winter season and they were amazing on snow, pretty good. Um, like in general winter condition, but they were kind of scary on ice. Didn't really hold up on ice, so for that they were. I wouldn't recommend them for a winter tire unless you're pretty much in the minus ten degrees Celsius. Like it's dry and there's there's pretty much just only snow and no ice. Yeah, so uh, run them the whole uh, winter, the first winter. Uh, as a backup, I had a snow change, chains, and like quick chains. And um, so if there were ice, uh, I could just stop and then put, put the chains on. Um, so it's an alternative just to run with these and then have the chains. But uh, I really prefer driving on the sturdy tires because I can handle pretty much any condition uh, and be safe on the road. Especially when I'm driving uh, with my family. 
and going up north. Uh, so uh, yeah, good tires. Really recommend them. Uh, I think next time I'm going to do a rougher tread just to get the more off road. Uh, get a better off road experience. They have been pretty good off road. You can see some of the videos I have. Um, but on the mud, they are not that good. So, as you see on the last video, the um, uh, on the written safari, you can see on the grass and on the mud, they are kind of uh, slippery. Uh, so I guess it's because they are polished, polished in the rubber. Um, yeah, so I would like to try MTs just to see if that are much better. Uh, but else, pretty good, holding up good. So five years, I paid around. Yeah, I paid. I think I paid fifteen hundred Norwegian kroner, which I guess is around. Yeah, two hundred dollars a tire. We paid. Yeah. So. Uh, Pretty good. Let's get them into the shed. <coughs> is in the tread so all you need to do now is test drive check some vibrations see if it's rolling as it should then come back after five five k's and then uh, do the check with the torque wrench again to check if the, the nuts are holding so let's go take a test drive Vibrations, anything, same sounds. Driving five, five k's around, around there, and then uh, go back. Check the torque on the nuts to just be sure that everything is tightened up. strange changing the tires because uh, the car feels a bit different so I have to get used to that it turns a bit easier now there are uh, there is actually ice on the road now so, uh, it was about time to change change the tires
don't know if you can you, if you could hear it but that's uh, that definitely is ice on the road we are sliding for braking okay so back home again fixing the car back in the garage Garage. Just need to check, and that's so again just cross tighten. Last one. This one actually felt pretty a bit loose, so that's good. Had to check. So that's basically a tire change on the Discovery 3. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and also smash that like button. And I'll see you in the next video. When you're done with your torque wrench, remember to uh, release the tension on the spring, which sits in here, so that you don't screw up your torque wrench. Like so.